Hey everybody, it's Thursday. Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. This is the best community on YouTube and I mean that hands down. Don't believe me, all you have to do is dig into the comments and see how much we love getting into it on this channel. So every Thursday on this channel, we talk into the Badlands and if you love that show and you're not a part of the community, then I don't know what you're waiting for because it is the most tremendous community on YouTube. As a matter of fact, today's subject comes from something that came out of the comments. So guys, we are talking Tilda today and this should be fun. We're going to do a little bit of a deep dive with Tilda today. Before we get into it though, I want to say thank you to everybody who actually subscribed to the channel that my wife and I are starting called Married to Malika. Going from single to married is really the name of the channel. Thanks you guys for subscribing. I know for some of you it's not your thing, but I ask you to help because we're trying to reach 100 subscribers and some of you guys did actually do that. I really, really appreciate it. That said, let's get into it. So, Tilda. Now, guys, we really can't talk Tilda really without talking about the widow because the widow had so much influence over who Tilda was, especially in the first season. But we're going to cover the first season and we're going to look at her arc, look at her progression from season one to season three. But as I said, we really can't get into that without bringing the widow into this conversation first because of the relationship that the two of them have. And really the relationship between the widow very much helps to shape who Tilda is in the beginning and who she will become as we see her transition transition from someone that's really a little girl from season one to the woman that she has become in season three. So the connection between Tilda and the widow is airtight. And you guys aren't surprised by that. I mean, you know, right? You know what the widow saved Tilda from every night. The Baron was coming in and having his way with Tilda. And she, I mean, you remember she said that. She said she would just kind of lay there, just kind of waiting for him to come. And the widow was the one that ended that whole process. So in the beginning, we really do meet this girl, in my opinion, who's really naive and really still trying to find herself. That's where I think Tilda is in season number one. Everything that the widow says is gold. She sees the widow through these pristinely rose-colored glasses. Nothing that the widow does can be wrong. I mean, which you really can't argue about when you consider what the widow saved her from. Even though people around her are seeing things with the widow that doesn't seem to quite add up. And when they bring it to Tilda's attention, what's her response? She's always like, well, mother wouldn't do that. You don't know mother. She's not like that. And the people around her are just like, hmm, you know, you know, you're not really seeing clearly, but you guys understand why she is the way that she is. So for most of season one, we really see Tilda under the widow's wing and how the widow's really done a lot from for her. But things start to change, right, when she meets MK. So when she meets MK, MK starts to question a little bit about what's going on with Tilda. And then we see Tilda really start to kind of think and reflect about what some of the things she's hearing about the widow are actually true. This is the beginning of Tilda's arc for me. You guys know how I am with these videos. I mean, let me know what you think in the comments. This is the beginning of her transition. This is the beginning of her actually kind of coming into her own, kind of starting to think for herself, kind of starting to develop different ideas about how the world might actually be outside of the way that the widow presents it. So MK is the one that really kind of puts that first chink in the armor. And that's the first time that we still we see Tilda kind of connect with MK on a level that seems a little bit more personal, right? That's the first time, if you will, the spark will kind of fly or that or that flicker will start to ignite between the two of them. Not a full blown relationship, but there's something going on between the two of them. But he does get her to thinking that maybe the widow is not all that she's cracked up to be. To the extent that the widow actually asked her to do something. You guys remember that. She asked uh, Tilda to cut MK because she believes that MK has the dark gift, which at this point we know that he does, but she doesn't do it. So MK has started to already have some influence on her. I have no doubt that if he had not, she would have cut him like she was directed. You know that she was following the, the directions of the widow, like when she killed the nomad. Didn't think anything about it, just did it. But MK starts to break that barrier down. So at that point on, we see Tilda kind of open up a little bit, kind of start to come into her own and kind of start to question the things that her mom does. And at that point on, we start to see the connection between her and MK and it really does grow. And we see that progression. So we know that MK, when he comes to the compound to raid it with Quinn, whew, that fight scene between Quinn and the widow was awesome. Just had to throw that in there. But she helps him escape. She doesn't turn him in. So she is already 
kind of moving away from the widow because of her interest in MK, but also because MK has kind of opened her eyes. So then we see this transition, right? This progression with her throughout the seasons as she becomes really more and more her own woman, starts to formulate her own ideas and starts to entertain the notion that the widow might not be all that she's presenting to be. Now, whether that's the case or not, that's something that we can have in the discussions because I personally, I do not think that the widow was trying to be uh, overly deceitful to Tilda. I think the widow loved Tilda. I think the widow saw Tilda as a daughter, but I think that Tilda did not see all that was going on. She did not understand the complexities of what the widow had to navigate in trying to reach the goal that she wanted to reach and bring that change to the Badlands. Tilda didn't recognize that. I don't think that's on the widow. I think that's on Tilda for seeing what she wanted to see, seeing what she needed to see. She saw the widow as she needed to see her. And at that point, she needed to see her in a pristine state because she just had that kind of relationship with her. But MK comes along and he puts a little crack in that. And then we start to see her character arc. We start to see her character begin to change, begin to grow. And then she challenges what she thought was kind of that supreme authority. She challenges that person that she thought knew everything. And then we start to see the distance of the gulf between Tilda and the widow grow to the point where in season two, Hope I'm not mixing my seasons up. You guys know, correct me in the comments if I am. She actually challenges the widow. At this point, she's heard a lot of what's gone on um, or in terms of the other people's opinions about the widow. And she actually challenges the widow and they actually fight, which was an epic scene. When we did our ranking video for the top fights, You guys, a lot of you guys had that in as, as part of the top five. I don't think I had, I mean, you know, I think I did have it in my top five. I can't remember. I got to go back and look at my own video. Um, but we start to see that art. We start to see that arc, I'm sorry. And she actually fights the woman who previously she held in such high regards. And then the distance between them starts to become even further and further. But you still see the widow trying to embrace Tilda, trying to bring Tilda back. Some people see this as manipulation on the widow's part. I don't. I think the widow loves Tilda. I think to this day, with where we are in season three, at the end of episode eight, I think she still feels that way. I think that she has crazy love for Tilda, and I think that she would do a lot of things to protect Tilda. I really do feel that the widow has a mother-daughter relationship with Tilda. But some people don't see that, so see it like that. I know some of you guys think that um, the widow has manipulated Tilda at some point, but at any way, at any rate, so we get to the point where those two actually fight each other, which is like crazy. We would you never think that that would happen until it does pretty well, right? She holds her own, but she's still not at that point. She's really not a match for the widow. But the fact that she has gotten to the point where she is seen differently, where she would actually lay hands on her is, is something interesting. And that is a very, very high point at the arc of her story where she begins to distance herself. And we see that gulf become greater and greater and greater until we get to season three. And then we see her pop on the scene, right? As the iron rabbit. And if that is not the baddest outfit that is one of the best outfits in the show hats off to you giovanni lapari because that outfit was bad and i remember when i saw it i was like oh man i didn't even know who it was i didn't recognize it. i was like who is that and then she takes off the the mask i'm like wow man now she is almost her her arc has has fully developed and she is almost on the opposite side if not fully on the opposite side of the person that she once had the highest degree of loyalty and commitment to. So it's, it was really interesting to see her go from this person who trusted the widow lock, stock, and barrel to someone who was in deep opposition of her now, believing that she is actually not doing what's best for the people. So it's really interesting to see her transition, to see that change. And what I like about that is you see Allie grow up or Tilda grow up in every kind of way, right? It's nice to see that transition because you see her transition from this 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 very naive girl who's a good fighter, not a not, not a great great fighter, but a good fighter transitioning all of the way to the Iron Rabbit who now is very formidable in terms of a fighter. So every aspect of her character has developed, has become better as her story has arced as we've seen a transition with her. And then we also see the relationship with her and MK become a little bit strained. And then they start, the show starts another relationship with, oh, I can't remember her name. 
can't remember the other girl's name, but she starts another relationship, uh, Tilda, with, with, with another girl in the show, and that kind of fizzles out, which I think is good, actually, because I think the relationship between her and MK is much more interesting. So I'm glad that it appears the show is beginning to pick that back up. But then you see an arc even in that development, right? You see a little rift between her and MK, where MK is kind of going on to uh, do his own thing. And, and MK is really finding himself as well. We can do a totally another video dedicated to MK. That's fine. We could do that. But we see a rift between those two, right? We see those two kind of separate as well. And one of the things that's really interesting about that is the very strong connection that they had. And we know that they had a strong connection because when they meet in that graveyard scene and MK goes dark and he punches or he could have, well, he tries to punch uh, Tilda, but she moves and then he gets her dead to rights. And he's really about to put a hole in her face with his fist. And she just, she hollers MK. And we get that beautiful, beautiful close-up of her. Man, the cinematographer did a great job there with just how her eyes dazzled, how it was close. And it pulled all of us in emotionally into that. And he stops. The first time we've seen MK control his gift. The very first time. And who does that happen for? It happens for Tilda. What that tells you is that there's something within Tilda that allows MK to calm himself, that allows the rage to not take over. She has something within her that allows him to control that gift. And I think it is a, a deep love he has for her, an affection that he has for her. I think it's kind of romantic, and but I think it's more. I just kind of think it's a, it's, it's a feeling of, of, of protection, of safety that he has with her. So I think it's kind of both of those, right? But whatever it is, he is able at that point to control his gift. And that's something fascinating to see because she allows him to do that. Now, mind you, it doesn't happen every time after that one encounter in the graveyard. We see other times where he gets cut and he goes dark and he really can't control it. But with Tilda, it's something different. So there is a connection between those two. And then those two kind of have a rift as he really is just kind of bent on finding revenge for himself against Sonny. And now she is transitioning to be more of a person that is for the masses and less of someone that's following the ideals or the plan that the widow has. Because at this point, she doesn't totally believe that the widow is really about freeing the, the folks in the Badlands, but more so about establishing herself, her own barony and her own power. So she transitions away. As a result of that, there is a gulf that happens with MK as well because MK wants to go off and do his own thing and she's like, no, don't do this. And she is committed now. She is committed to the task at hand of really serving the people of the Badlands, so much so that she even is willing to separate from MK. But you never feel like the connection between those two is lost. So that's what's really interesting about how her story is arced. And now we find her today at the end of season three or the midway point, I'm sorry, of season three, really kind of being her own person. She does team up again with the widow uh, for the sake of taking down Baron Chow, but she is no longer tied to the hip at the widow. Though I do believe, I do believe that there is still a connection between those two. I, I, I just feel it when I see them on screen. I just feel it when I see them interact. And I do believe that there will be some unification between those two. Who knows when we'll get it, right? But I think that those two are coming back together, especially now, because we know now that the widow, it, it looks like anyway, she's on a whole different trajectory now. Like what she was doing before, I don't know what's going to happen to that. I said in another video that Tilda might pick up that mantle, but it might look a little bit different with Tilda because her ideals about how she thinks the things should work in the Badlands are a little bit different than what the widow is doing. But who knows? It might be very similar. She might pick up the mantle to say, listen, we're not going to have any more baronies in the Badlands and people will be able to operate in a freer fashion. I'm trying to get rid of the old and end with the new. Tilda might pick up that mantle. We don't know. We do not know. She's a really interesting character, man, and I'm really looking forward to to getting into more of her story as well. From what I'm hearing, we are going to see MK's story pick up more, which I think will bring Tilda in to the picture as well, because I think those two stories are going to tie in together. Share, like, comment, 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 and if you are new here, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.